Hi ladies, Beth from Be Styled here. Time for Tipsy Tuesday. Welcome. How are you doing? Uh, welcome to my dining room and my rack. Today, I wanna talk more about spring dressing and share some tips, random as always. I have my little list of things that I wanted to share with you um, and, and also open up any, to any questions you might have as we go along. But two of the topics that I want to talk about are pattern tops and pattern dresses um, and also belts. Very random, but they're two things that have come up in my spring group um, and I just have some rules of thumb, not rules, some tips about choosing pattern tops, choosing pattern dresses, and also um, choosing what belt to wear and if you're even gonna wear a belt. Okay, so welcome everyone who's joining. Um, before I get started, I want to ask a question about social media. I'm curious how many of, of well, there are not many of you here yet, but even on the replay, type in and let me know if you are an Instagram person as well as Facebook. Obviously, I do these lives on Facebook. I am over on Instagram very, you know, indiscriminately or not in, inconsistently. And I know that, that, that Instagram is kind of where all the, where it's at. And um, I, I just know I need to get over there, but I'm just curious to see if, if you people are over there because if, if my people aren't really over there, then, then I, you know, why bother, right? <laughs> um, so I'm just curious, but it's a different platform for me. There's all kinds of really crazy and interesting creative things you can do. Um, and it's a big learning curve. And a lot of it to me is just seems just very intimidating. So, but you know, I'm open to trying new things and um, it sounds like a lot of you are on Instagram. It sounds like everyone's on Instagram, so I guess I need to get with it. Um, okay, so to start, I'm talking about pattern blouses. Let me know in the comments if you are a pattern person or a solid person. Um, I'd be curious to know, because I think people kind of do fall into one of, this, one of the two camps. And I, as I always say, I am a solid girl. I used to say I was a pattern phobe. Not, you know, not, not that I'm afraid of pattern, but I just gravitate towards solids. Um, but I also do see the benefit of pattern, especially, um, especially if you have a, if you're trying to have a tight wardrobe, you can use pattern. In a, in a, you know, without having a ton of clothes, you can use, you can sprinkle in pattern to your solids and really stretch your wardrobe and make, make more interesting outfits. Um, so I talked last week about trends and, and things like that and how you want to have your trends and your interesting and your sprinkle and your sparkle be about 20% of your wardrobe and then the foundational stuff be the other 80% or somewhere along those lines, um, just so that you can have a workable wardrobe and patterns kind of fall i think personally into that 20 percent camp now if you are a total pattern person and i know you're out there then your number might be maybe it's 50 50 um, or maybe maybe you do skew towards pattern um, but let's talk a little bit about about thought the thought process to use when you're considering purchasing a pattern okay um looks like we're split so far half and half um, but everyone seems to be on Instagram. Um, okay, so when you are picking a pattern top, I'm gonna to use the one that I have on as an example because I do, I, I, I almost always put a pattern top in my spring style system, um, especially in the spring. Usually it's a floral, it doesn't have to be. Um, florals are very popular this season and I do like to add a floral pattern top to my wardrobe most you know, one in the spring and summer. Um, I try to keep it to one, and this is the one that I chose this year. I got it at Loft. I, I don't spend a lot of money on tops like this unless it's a real statement top that I can wear, you know, really glammy and, and, and you know, instead of a dress, for example, get a great top that goes with some great pants, which I'm gonna show you how you can do that. Um, but for the most part, I don't spend a lot of money on pattern tops. Um, this, this, I think this one, I took the price tag off today. It retailed for like $64.99. I think I got it at law for probably 17, like, you know, a gazillion percent off. I probably paid 20 some dollars for it. So, you know, 
friends, especially at Loft. I love Loft, but never ever pay full price at Loft. Really, it, it will go on sale. You can find a coupon code. If you're online, Google coupon code Loft and you will find them. Um, their, their stuff is always on sale, okay? So anyway, you don't have to spend a lot of money. Target's another great source for pattern tops. Um, those are probably my two, two go-tos, Target and Loft, okay? Now, um, when you're making the decision ab about a pattern top, think about the, the um, predominant color of a pattern top. And in my opinion, a pattern top looks the most chic and most modern when there is one predominant color. Like when you look at this pattern top, what do you see? I see a greenish blue, which is, which is one of my colors, according to the color guru. I'm a calm Sunday, summer, calm summer, and this greenish blue, which I do love, is one of my colors. So check that box. And it does, it, in my mind, it does have one color that it's kind of reading towards. That makes sense, like one predominant color versus a pattern that has, you know, even, even like three or four colors equally distributed in really big print is not good, is, is just not gonna be as, as modern of a look. It just isn't for right or wrong. Um, and the size of the print is something to consider as well. This is a small to medium sized print. Um, and it's pretty tight and it repeats over and over again. Like there's no, there's no pattern to the print, meaning there's no like stripe going on. Some, some, some floral blouses actually have stripes in the pattern. You know, it's not like a line, but the pattern is arranged in a way that, that creates horizontal stripes. So you want to be aware of that. If, for example, you're a, you're a classic pear shape and you're very narrow on top and wider on the bottom, maybe you want a top that has, a, you know, a, a, wide, a bigger pattern or, or something horizontal going on with it to even things out. Because that's, that's with dressing, with body shape dressing, that's always the goal is to create symmetry. So if you're wider on the bottom, maybe you want to create some width and some, some increase the size on the top. Um, but just know that your patterns do that. A very large pattern makes whatever it's on look larger, whether it is a floral with, with a large pattern or, or a, a stripe that's a wide stripe, whether it's, whether it's a true stripe or just the pattern is going in a horizontal base direction. If it's, if it's wide stripes, it makes that part of your body look bigger and wider. If it's pinstripe, it almost, it really kind of makes it look smaller because it confuses the eye. Any kind of tight print confuses the eye. It doesn't, you're not landing anywhere. So it, it's great at camouflaging. If you're trying to camouflage a belly, a tight print, whether it's, um, you know, a, a paisley type print, like a tight by tight, I mean, like, here's an example, um, a tight print, like where the, where the pattern is, is dense and tight and not big and bold or not, not bold, but not big. The, the components of the pattern aren't big. That's going to make things look bigger. Tighter prints are going to fool the eye and be, and be, uh, make things look smaller or, or just not bigger. Does that make sense? Let me know if that makes sense. Okay. So this top I would say is sort of right in between, you know, and, and because it's a repeating pattern that doesn't have any direction to it, it's just, it's just sort of neutral in that sense, right? It has the predominant color, and then the colors within the pattern just happen to be favorite colors of mine. Now, because they're favorite colors of mine, that means I can go to my closet and not go shopping and find at least three or four things that I can wear with this. So that's my rule of thumb. When you're thinking about shopping, when you're shopping and looking at a shirt, looking at a blouse, and it's a pattern, you're asking yourself, what's the predominant color? Does it have a predominant color? Is it my predominant color? Do I like it? Is it flattering on me? Look at the lines of it. You know, an open neckline is, is, is generally more flattering from, from a lot of body types. You know, whether it has a V, this is just an open neckline. It has the strings, which bug some people. Someone asked me if they could cut these strings off, and I, and I looked at it, and I was like, you absolutely could. They don't really bother me. I would not wear it tied, personally. Um, I mean, I guess I, you could if you would give it a different look. Whenever I see ties like this, I, I, I just let them let them fly. And then I, and I, you know, I'm wearing a necklace. Are we 
this is one necklace that's two little pendants. Um, but yeah, you, you could close it and tie it if that's the look you're going for. So there's some versatility there. But at, you know, showing some skin right here, ladies, like I talk about, is flattering. So it's showing your, your um, lower arms flattering. This has elastic waist, elastic um, sleeves, so I could make it a three quarter and it gives that like puff sleeve look, or I could scooch it up and make it to my elbow, um, how we want. So I'm obviously wearing it by itself, and that's the beauty of a pattern top. If you live in a warm climate, you can put a pattern top on and you're, you're one and done, just like with a dress, because this top stands on its own and it's great, right? Um, now, you want to have three to three to at least three things that you can wear with it, but you also want to have, I would say, at least two, preferably three or more bottoms that you can wear with a pattern top. So in the case of this, um, what's interesting about this top is black is immediately checked off the list. Like, no, I, I would not wear this top with black. To me, it just, it just, it wouldn't work. Um, not so much because there's no black in the top. Well, maybe that is why. There is absolutely no black in the top. Um, and so, so I personally wouldn't wear black with this. So that eliminates black pants, which you could say, well, you know, gosh, I wear black pants all the time. If that's the case, then maybe this, this top wouldn't be the best choice for you. But I'm wearing it with um, this. These are called parchment. These are the Spanx pants I talk about a lot. Um, they're like a pull-on with a elastic waist and they do have like Spanx technology, but people have asked if you feel like you're wearing like shapewear and you don't at all. They're just comfortable. They're, they're just pull on elastic waist pants. I'm going to try to show you what they look like. So they have this nice angled pocket detail, you know, angling is always flattering. They are a wide leg, but not enormously wide. They're just, you know, that on trend wide leg and they, they, um, and you know, this far above my ankle. I'm wearing them today with my Amazon ankle booties because it's still cold, but I would probably, once spring comes around, I'll be wearing them most likely with these babies, which I talked about in my newsletter that a lot of us got last year. Mine are a year old, but they're still, they're still fine. Um, and that's what I would wear these pants with because a, a cropped wide leg pant, always looks better with a little bit of a heel. I mean, you can wear it with flats, especially if you're tall, but if you want the best look, a little bit of a heel is best with a pant like this. But anyway, I could wear it with my parchment, which is like an off-white pant. Definitely wear it with white jeans, and I could wear it with um, denim, any of my denim jeans. So there's my three pants that I could wear it with. In addition, I technically do have a pair of blush pants similar to this from Target last year that I could wear this with. To me, it'd be a lot of color, a lot of like pink on the bottom and this on top. If I were to do that, if I were feeling very colorful that day and I wanted to wear my pink pants with this, what I would throw on is a denim jacket, either this or white, but I'd probably go with denim to kind of quiet things down. Denim, A denim jacket is a great way to quiet things down when you have a lot of color. Um, and you want to just mellow it out a little bit. I think denim white works too, but denim almost works better. It almost adds that like cool factor um, that that just calms down all the, if I had pink pants and then this top denim jacket would be a great addition. But that's, so so that's why this blouse made the cut for me. I have, I have the, the three plus, three plus, I could also wear it with denim jeans, jean shorts. I have white jeans, white shorts I could wear this top with. So I have a ton of bottoms that I could wear this with. Not black though. Now I, I wanna be able to wear it. The other criteria for picking this, this um, pattern top is um, what topper I can wear, what toppers I can wear with it, or what third things I can wear it with to quote our favorite Suzanne, Dr. Suzanne Coven, um, third things. So I went to my closet some of these things are available, some of them aren't, but I went to my closet. You gotta go to your closet and say, before, before you take the tags off the shirt, say, okay, you know, I'm wearing neutral pants. What options do I have for a third thing? And I ran, I stopped at one, two, three, four, five, six, I think seven, seven things. You don't have to necessarily have that many, 
but that's the sign of a good top and that's a sign of a workable wardrobe because you know these aren't things that I'm telling you to go out and buy these are things that I own that I could wear with this with this what I picked today was the denim jacket just because I just you know that's just what I picked so that would be like a great casual look other options this is my second choice which I actually absolutely love if I wanted to be a little more dressy or a little more I don't know not denim jackety. I would put this baby on. This is the McKenna, I call it a shacket. It's a McKenna jacket um, that came out by, by Peach, I think in the winter, but it's such a great spring piece. It's faux suede. It's just fabulous. And I, and I love this outfit. So there's number two. You know, I, I would cuff my sleeves. I would keep my booties on. So there's, there's a number two. Um, what else do I have here? So that's like sort of an in-between casual and, oh, that'd be a good work outfit for a lot of you. What else did I say I have? I have, um, I have my white Ponte blazer that I didn't bring down, but a white, a white denim jacket or a white blazer, in which case I'd probably put jeans on. Um, would I? I'd probably put jeans on if I was putting a white topper on with this. Um, but keeping the off-white pants on, I have this. Who has this? This is this is something I would wear in the fall, especially with jeans or with these pants, because these pants are seasonless. And and you know, being able to wear a top like this year-round is an added bonus. And look for that. Like I could definitely wear this year-round. And in the fall, I would wear it with a pair of light wash jeans and this. Um, it's a um, like a cargo jacket. This is the um, Marshall jacket. I think it's, it's still available in some sizes on sale from Peach um, in the sales section and it's a, in some sizes. And it's this marine blue. Um, a lot of you have the marine blue flyaway. Looks fantastic. This marine blue looks great with this. Um, and it kind of has that same, it calms down some of the color, but it just goes, it works. So that was from my closet. Um, I have this cardigan that I got it. Banana Republic at least a year or two ago that came with a matching set. It's like a loungewear cardigan, technically. It came with a matching like tank top and matching shorts. Um, and it's great. In the summer, I wear it like to bed. But then I was like, well, it's such a great tone on tone cardigan with this top. So who cares if it was meant to be a lounge sweater? It's a great cardigan. I would wear this with this top. So how many are we up to? We're up to the blush, the, the pink, the denim, white, this color, the marine blue, and I think I'd wear blush with this too. This looks great with blush. So I have, I have blush cardigans and I have a blush blazer. <laughs> so it works with my, with my wardrobe. So you've got to find things that work with your wardrobe, okay? So that's, let me just see if I covered all my, I lost my piece of paper. That's my pattern top checklist, okay? So don't be buying a million things. Don't be buying a million. I turned on do not disturb. I hope I didn't lose you. Last time I got a call, I lost you guys. Let me know if you lost my volume. Um, anyway, don't buy a million things. Buy things that work with your wardrobe that you can transform and wear it to work with a blazer. Wear it in the fall with your cargo jacket and jeans. Wear it, you know, in the summer with dressy white slacks even or pants or white jeans and wedge heels um, and on and on and on, okay? So that's that's one way of making a plaid, a plaid top really work for you, okay? Or not a plaid, a pattern top. Um, now I want to share another idea for all you occasion dressers that we have. A lot of us have occasions coming up, graduations, weddings, showers, things like that. So our, our immediate instinct is to, to go buy a dress. And that's that's my immediate instinct usually too. Um, and I did go buy, I showed, I showed it to you, a solid blue. It's kind of like got that prairie layered dress look, but it does tie and it's solid and it, it does have like some eyelet. So I have that dress that I got at TJ Maxx um, at the um, high end end of TJ Maxx runway. But yesterday I was in there and um, I found this top because I was thinking for my, I have a couple, I have a couple graduations. I have, I have some events finally this spring. And I was thinking um, I, this top just caught my eye. And that's the thing about patterns. Patterns are like artwork for your home. You got to go with what catches your eye, which with what, you know, works with 
rings your bell, you know? It's not gonna be what rings my bell necessarily. It's gotta ring your bell. And this pattern rang my bell. It's technically, I think you'd call it a paisley, um, but it's a very modern paisley and it's beautiful. It is, feels like silk. I don't even know what it is. It's some fancy schmancy designer that I didn't know. Maybe you know it. It's called Ramy Brook, R-A-M-Y Brook, New York. And um, let's look at what it retailed for. And you can Google it, if, or you can go on TJ Maxx's site, or just go to TJ Maxx. It it retailed for two hundred and ninety five dollars. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. But it's it is it is a beautiful top, and I got it for fifty nine. And my thought was the beauty of a dressy top as opposed to a dress. If you if you're more of a pants person like me is the whole versatility factor. Um, this is a very dressy top. It's got this great tie in the back. It's got a keyhole front. Um, it's some, it's lined, fully lined, but it feels, it's like, it feels like silk or some beautiful fabric. And I would wear this with pants and I just as luck would have it, happen to have my brand new peach wide leg um, Zion pants that I have, that I have, I have a matching top with the Zion pants that makes for a great kind of faux jumpsuit. But as I was in the store, I was thinking, how lucky would that be if it works with the Zion pants? And I brought it home and sure enough, it does. I would have, I would have returned it if it didn't. I don't know why all these texts are coming through. I said, do not disturb on. Hey Siri, turn on do not disturb. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I guess. Anyway, so 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 this gives me an option for a dressy outfit that's not a dress and that I can then wear the separates any number of ways. I could wear this with white jeans this summer. Um, you know, it's pretty dressy, but I could probably dress it down. I could definitely dress it down with white jeans. Don't know if I would wear it with denim jeans. It's probably a little too nice for that. Um, but I figure for $59, I'm getting a, an expensive shirt, expensive top that I will love forever. I mean, this is, that's like a, a, um, a halter neck, um, neckline that I love. So there you go. All right. Next, I'm getting so many texts. People stop texting me. <laughs> Next, let's talk about belts. We're going to shift gears. I want to see if anyone has questions. First, I should see if maybe I've gone off. Are we working here? Volume froze. Hopefully it's back. It's because people keep calling me, even though I said do not disturb on. Are we working, ladies? Oh, I hope so. Next, I want to talk briefly. Oh, one other thing. One other thing about, okay, this is for your people who are solid people who are do not like pattern, okay? We talked about this a little bit last week, and you can you could bring in some pattern with what I call neutral patterns. I, this is a blouse that I have from Amazon. I will link it. It was very inexpensive and very nice. This is a really pretty blouse. I don't generally love a lot of leopard, but this is actually called Dalmatian. And so it's, it's not a big, big leopard. It's a small animal print called Dalmatian. Um, and I just think this would be such a chic look, even with the, with the pants I have on and a thick gold chain necklace and gold hoop earrings. This would be fantastic. And this is a great way for you solid people to bring some pattern in um, that's not, you know, this. It's a little more chic, a little more, you know, sophisticated, but it's still more interesting than just a beige top or just a black top would be. Okay, so the, here's, so remember your, what I call neutral patterns. That would include leopard, it would include stripe, you know, like a, a thin stripe top or blouse. It would include checks, plaids, ginghams. Those are all neutral patterns. And then if you really don't like pattern, think about what you're picking when you get solids. When you buy all your solids, think about having a little bit of interest with your solids. So here's a sweater and a blouse example. This is a Target top in a very similar color. I think, I got, I think I'm think i taking it back because I don't need it really, but I really liked it. And this is an example of a solid top that, that gives you your solid, but it has the interest of this top. You know, it's, it's, it's got that on very on-trend kind of look to it um, while still being a solid. And it's Knox Rose for Target. 
um, probably 20 some dollars, I'm guessing. And then here's a sweater example. This on this very on trend, you know, um, V neck cardigan, button cardigan sweater. This is a lot of them are very cropped, which is tricky for most of us. This one is just sort of a regular length, but it's, it's so it's a solid sweater and, and a great color that I love, but it's got some detail to it. It's not crazy detail, but just this pointel knit sleeve. Um, this is from Amazon. This was like a kind of expensive Amazon. Um, it feels really nice. It's, it's from the drop. I will, I will post it, link it comes in a couple colors and neutrals and it comes in a white, which it would be great in a white, but here's a solid sweater that still stands on its own because it's got some interesting detail. Okay. And it's a sweater that I can wear all summer long. I could wear this literally all year round. I'd wear this in the winter. Why not? Okay. Um, so that's my solid pattern spiel. Now we're going to talk really quickly. <laughs> I don't do anything quickly when it comes to talking or being concise about belts. What color is it? What color is what, Nancy? This is yellow. This, this top is like a greenish, similar to this. It, this is a very hip color right now, the sage green. Um, I'm not sure what color you're asking about, what color what is. Um, let's talk about belts, okay. First, we're gonna do the old um, trick about determining if you are long-waisted or short-waisted. I haven't done this in a while. I'm gonna to try to do it without flashing you. But, because belts come in, to, that, that's something to consider when you're deciding about belts. And most of us at, at, at the age we're at now kind of know that I'm long waisted or short waisted. But if you really don't know, here's a simple trick. It's like a little, it's a little bar trick you can teach your friends <laughs> if they don't know if they're long or short waisted. You're gonna take your hands and you're gonna put them together like this. So your fingers are closed. You're not like this, you're like this. And you're going to put your bottom hand so that your pinky finger no, you're gonna take, sorry, you're gonna take your top hand and so it's put it right under your bust, like right, oh, here come the dogs, right under your, your bust, your bra strap, okay? Right at your bra strap. So your thumb is like on the bra strap. Then you're gonna take your other hand and you're gonna put it right up against that, okay? Then you're gonna feel or look and you're gonna say, where is my belly button in relation to my lower pinky finger? If, in, like in my case, it's right there, like it's lined up, that means you are proportionate. You're not long-waisted or short-waisted. You're just you, <laughs> okay? If your belly button is well below your, your pinky finger, if it's way down here, you are what? You are long-waisted. If your belly button is completely covered by your pinky or, or your hand, then you are what? You are short-waisted. Ta-da! Now you know, all right? So let me know, are you long-waisted, short-waisted, or proportionate? That's how you find out. There's probably math you could do instead, but that works 99% of the time, all right? Now, it's, you, there's, there's a lot to talk about, and I have a blog post about long waist, short waist, and, and how to dress, but belts are an issue. If you are very short-waisted, you know, if, meaning that the, the, you don't have a lot of real estate between the girls and the top of your pants, then, then what? A big wide belt is going to be not your friend, right? You don't wanna wear a wide belt on a short waist because you're just gonna be, you're gonna be a just all belt, right? Um, the, the sweet spot, I think for belts, like if you're just gonna have one belt or two belts and the most universally flattering width of a belt is an inch to an inch and a quarter. This this inexpensive Amazon belt, I tell everyone to get, if you don't have a black belt, I mean, it's very inexpensive. Um, I have it in this, I have it in cognac, and then I have, they have it now in a great taupe color. Mine is different. Um, but I, if, if we're doing it again, I'd get this one or the similar one in like a, it's, it's like a taupe. So that's gonna work for most people. If you're very short-waisted, you might just say, you know what, I don't wear belts, and that is totally fine. But most of the, most of the time you can, um, and we can talk about that another time, but the key to be for, for belts, if you're looking for a rule, which I know a lot of us are, in my opinion, it looks best 
especially for the most, you know, flattering effect, especially for us women over 50 with menopause and all that. It looks best if the color of your belt matches or coordinates with the pants and or the top you're wearing, okay? Example, you're wearing, you know, black pants or black jeans and any color top by wearing a black belt you're, you're actually, you're kind of elongate, you're kind of visually elongating your, your torso because you're matching the belt to the pants. You're not, you're not cutting it off in other words. Um, now on the flip side, let's say it's summertime. Like I see this a lot. Um, it's cause it's so tempting because people, you know, people, once they discover belts, they want to wear belts all the time. Um, and Sometimes you feel like you have to wear a belt because your pants are too big. That's not a reason to wear a belt. Never buy pants that you can't wear without a belt. You got to wear it. They don't fit you. That means they don't fit you if you have to have a belt to keep them from falling down. Like that, that's for our young sons and maybe our husbands. Belts aren't really intended anymore, I don't think, to hold your pants up when you're an adult. <laughs> Is that true? I think that's true. Not really. You know, unless it's like a pair of boyfriend jeans that are really baggy and oversized. Your pants, your belt's not meant to hold your pants up. They should fit without a belt, is my point. Um, but let's say you're wearing, you know, this color pant, and you're wearing a, um, oh, let's see, even like this, the top, a solid top in a color. And you're, so you're wearing a, a lighter top and white or cream on the bottom. Um, a, you could just skip the belt. Chances are, with something like this, because it's got a lot of fabric, I'm just not even going to wear a belt especially with these pants. I just wouldn't wear a belt. I would do a little loose tuck and blouse it out and skip the belt. Boom. But if you were wearing a, a, you know, a top where you really, you, you really felt like you needed to wear a belt or whatever, and you're wearing light pants, then you're going to want your belt to coordinate with the pants. You want it to like something like this, where it's, it's going to coordinate versus, you know, let's say I'm wearing like a hot pink top and this color pants, and then I go and put either like a black belt on or even like a tan or brown belt. It's just, it's cutting me, it's creating this horizontal line right across my middle, and it's it's breaking up the outfit in my mind, like the bright pink top and the white pants, and then you've got a brown belt on. I mean, I guess you could then wear brown shoes and say that's gonna work, but your shoes and your belt really do not have to, um, have to match. Um, now, okay, Luana, that's a very good question. I thought if your pants had belt lips, you had to wear a belt. That maybe there's that used to be a rule, and sometimes it probably looks best, but not always. I mean, I wear jeans almost all the time, and I don't always wear a belt. It depends on your top. If you're wearing a very tucked-in top, and and then maybe you want to have a belt. But I very rarely really tuck in my top. Like I, I usually either do a. With this, I had it all the way tucked in, but I would do just a, a loose top, loose front tuck and then blouse it out. And then I don't worry about wearing, even if I have, these, this, these pants have belt loops. I don't worry, worry about wearing um, a belt. Uh, especially, especially a dressier outfit. If you're wearing a, a really pretty blouse um, and pants, sometimes a belt, takes away from the dressiness of it. It makes it look more casual, especially if it's just a basic leather belt with a buckle. Um, that can look, um, it, can take, it can take away from the dressiness of the blouse. I think it's better to just blouse, let the blouse hang, you know, fall over the belt loops and, and skip the belt or intentionally wear the belt and have the belt work with the pants and the top and not detract from it. Okay, so no, I don't think there's ever a time that you absolutely have to wear a belt. You know, men is another story, but for women, it's not always the case just because there are belt loops. Um, okay, so, but when in doubt, match the top or the bottoms to the belt. Okay, unless, unless you're really trying to make a statement, unless it's, um, you know, like if I was wearing this jumpsuit, I made a jumpsuit out of my um, blue top and matching bottoms. Then I might want to, I might want to add a statement belt like this. It's not really a statement belt, but a wide belt that's that's neither color, but it's still neutral. And this would kind of finish it off. And then I would wear a shoe 
in this color, um, which is probably what I'd wear anyway, and maybe carry a, hand, a straw handbag or something to tie in the, um, the belt to the outfit. Um, so if you're wearing a belt that makes a statement, like it's a, you know, a patterned belt with some color on it, which I've shown, that's another story. But if you're just looking to for a, just a very sleek, elongated, flattering look, the belt, you want it to match the bottoms and or the top. That makes sense? Okay. I'm trying to think of like an example of, let's say you were wearing these pants or white pants and a black blouse and you really want to wear, and you want, you have a really cool belt that you like, and you like the buckle, then I would wear black. You could then wear a black belt with the white or cream pants because you're wearing the black on top. Or if the top was patterned and had black in it, or was a really deep color, like a burgundy or a wine, um, and the black blended in with that, that would work as well. Okay. All right. <laughs> oh all over the place. Let's see if we have any questions. Um, anyone have any questions? We were talking about patterns and belts <laughs> and belting. And now you all know if you're short or long-waisted or not, or if you're just um, proportionate, I guess would be the word. Does any, did anyone do the test, the hand test? What are you? I'd be curious. I'd be curious what the, how the population breaks up. Um, and, um, you know, if it's, if you have interest, I can, I'll, I'll post, I can post my, my blog post about dressing the short-waisted body, um, because that's something that I get asked a lot. And there are some little tips and tricks that you can do, you know, V-necks and, um, the loose half tuck, all kinds of things, but, um, proportion is everything. All right. Any questions, ladies? Any questions? Did I miss anything? Whoop, whoop. I just bought a leopard belt. Wanted to wear it with a black dress. Would this work? I'm short waisted. I think it would be, uh, yes, leopard is neutral and it's got the black in it. So I love black and, um, and leopard. Would you wear a belt with the Zion pants as a jumpsuit? That, see, I, I, I think when I tried it on that way, I was more comfortable not belting it that's the, 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 these, these pants and top, Cindy. Um, what I preferred with this Zion, the Zion pants, which are the wide pants and this um, Portofino top, what I prefer rather than tucking in the top and belting it is, um, although it would look great like on you like that, I don't have much of a waistline and it, um, I'm kind of straight, so it doesn't always work well for me. But what I did when I wore this is I took my little handy dandy clear rubber band and taught, did the side knot with this. So, so it, I left it untucked and then just brought it up a little bit with the rubber band, the goodie, you know, clear rubber band. Okay, Amy, if you wear a black top, white pants and black belt, can you still wear neutral? Absolutely. You can wear neutral shoes anytime you want. Absolutely. You could wear black shoes with that outfit if you wanted to do a, just a, if you wanted to make like a black and white statement, you could definitely wear black shoes, but you could definitely wear nude shoes. Absolutely. I don't, I can't, there aren't many times where you can't wear nude shoes. Those times are few and far between. Um, but I, I love that. And in which case you might even want to pick your, your leopard belt instead, instead of the stark black, you could wear your white pants, black top, leopard belt, nude shoes, gold jewelry. That would be fantastic. What third piece would you wear with the Zion jumpsuit? With the Zion jumpsuit, I would wear, um, and I, what I did wear is my black denim jacket, and then I wore a black simple heel, just a one strap black sandal. Um, I, I do love this color with black. And then I wore silver jewelry. Um, you could wear white, a white denim jacket with this. Um, you could, you, I would not wear denim denim with it. It'd just be too drab. So white or black. Um, what else? Um, it depends on what other options you have, but I would kind of keep it light. If you're wearing it as a jumpsuit, um, maybe a wrap, maybe if you're doing it dressed up, maybe a wrap, in which case you could go with like a cream or a white wrap, um, or, or do the black 
and then wear black shoes and silver jewelry. Um, the, this with black I like, especially if you're for like a dressy nighttime. For nighttime, this looks great with black. Daytime, I would go with white or cream with this, and then neutral shoes. Is that right? Okay. Any other questions? I love when you guys have questions. What third piece would Nyan do? Is pro I'm proportioned. N Nancy, you're, propor you're, you're proportionate, I guess. There you go. So that just means you're not long or short-waisted. Um, same with me. Elena is long-waisted. Just bought a leopard belt. Oh, leopard belts are great. This one, I didn't bring mine down, but the Amazon leopard belt. The key to a leopard belt, I think, is that you want it to be calf hair. You know, it's not real, I'm sure, but on Amazon, they're like less than 20 bucks. But you want it to have that texture as opposed to just like plasticky looking. Any Anything that's like plasticky looking animal print, I don't love. I like it to have some texture, some some hair. And they make them that way now, almost exclusively. I thought of your pants. Okay, we did that one. Any other questions? Anyone? Anyone? I think I got them all. Now's your chance. Come to New Jersey. I have been eyeing Ramey Brooke. Let's see if I could find something similar, what you just showed. Who's that saying that? Rose. I know. So you, I didn't even know that. Um, I don't even know that brand for summer night out. Well, go to TJ Maxx Runway and look for it. Or I will even look, I'll look on their website and see if I can find a, um, it's called the Printed Lulu, L-U-L-U-L-U-L-A. Color is papier. Anyway, they retail for $285. Gotta love that. Rainby Book, Brooks. Okay. Um, silk skirt from Quince would look great with that new top. With which new top? I'm trying to think. I don't know if this, are you talking about this top, the silks? This I feel like is too cottony for the, um, for the Quince silk skirt. If that's what you're talking about, Elena. Um, that top, oh, I know what you mean. It'd be great with this top. Yes, indeed it would. I have the quince silk, it's either silk or satin, um, like non-color colors, like taupey neutral. It would be gorgeous with this. You're absolutely right, Elena. Thank you for that tip. There you go, that's my third thing. I can wear it with white jeans, the, the Zion pants, and now I can wear it with that skirt, thanks to you. Genius, I hadn't even thought of that. That was a real, this, that top was a real impulse purchase because um, I, I do need it for some events. Need it. That's not true, I really didn't need it. I really liked it. Oh, she's watching from the golf course. Hi, Amy. Hi, Amy's husband, four. <laughs> That's great. Um, any other questions? Look at all you fun people. I, I also have this top, love it, it's not. Um, for guru. Oh, well. Oh, Nancy said this isn't your... I thought we were the same na coloring, Nancy. No? Oh, well. I'm sure it's close enough. I think this is my color from the guru. It's close enough. It's, it's as you can see, I own a lot of this color. So um, I, think it's, I think it's my color. Maybe we aren't the same season, Nancy. I thought we were. It's a great top. Hello, everybody. Any other questions, people? any questions at all. And remember, like I said, pattern is like artwork. It's got to speak to you. If you love it, if it jumps out at you at the store, then that, then you know it's speaking to you. But if it's just like, well, it's okay, then, then, then walk away. Walk away. Maybe you have something in your closet that's even better. And you can wear things over and over again, right? You don't have to have something new every time. The one you got from TJ Matt. Okay, yeah. I don't know if it's satin or I'll, I'll, I'll post a link to that skirt, Elena, because that's a, a great skirt. Um, what a steal. I know. Isn't that my, my top is a steal. I try to stay out of TJ Maxx. I, I, I completely stayed out of it for many years. And now I, every once in a while I go back in and um, that runway is it's there's some there because there's a lot of junk at TJ Maxx. Um, you got to weed through it. I used to do that for as part of, that's how my business started. I used to take friends to TJ Maxx and teach them how to shop at TJ Maxx. Um, anyway, I hope this was helpful. I hope you got something out of it. 
Um, if you have any questions, you can type them in here for watching the replay. And um, I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.